If reality was a movie, would you like to see the ending? Or would you leave the cinema theater before it was shown on the screen to go watch another movie? This is just a metaphor, but since truth speaks no words, we are left with metaphors, analogies and parables to communicate among ourselves, for those with ears to hear and eyes to see, right? Well, first of all, let's address the, the topic of the contemplation. Apocalypse. Ooh, scary word. What is apocalypse? It is revelation. Etymologically, it comes from Greek apo, that is, off, away from, and kalyptain, that is, to cover or conceal. So it represents the time when the concealments come off. Therefore, in a way, we can say that as a society, we are living in the times of apocalypse, as so much has been willingly or unwillingly revealed already, and surely more to come. Yet there seems to be a deeper meaning to it too. Is it really just revelation, or is there another layer to it? In a previous video, the systems recruitment one, I postulated that the deceivers, let's call them that, have been revealing the falsehood of the world themselves, as an attempt to recruit our life spark into helping the new false system that follows. Yet if they are deceivers, then why would they reveal their own deceit? Well, in that video I suggested that it might be an attempt at both torture and temptation, to trigger us in a sort of Stockholm Syndrome that would make us help them. Still, that does not seem to be enough. I observe that there may be another meaning behind their own disclosure perhaps distraction. Note straight away that I am not going to discuss any religion's apocalypse in this contemplation of mine, at least not in the way it is usually taken, not because I find no value in them, quite the contrary, but because they are so impregnated with emotional programmed triggers that it usually leads to more confusion than clarity. So I am, instead, going to discuss possibilities and hypotheses for us, that is, those of us who have life spark, or whatever you want to call it, to think about together. I will try to explain my observation with metaphors of sorts, using cultural analogies too, such as movies and games, because these are things we can easily access together. Feel free to transpose the metaphors to your religious or spiritual view, if required. So, in the 1999 movie Existence, yes, in the same year of release as the famous Matrix, we see the concept of a game world within a game world, that is, a virtual reality within a virtual reality, to a point in which it becomes debatable whether the initial premise of the movie was the actual reality or already a game world being played out. To me, the movie fell short of the excellent premise and was a fiasco both in its implementation and the quality of its writing. However, it offered us useful glimpses into important concepts, enumerating 1. The matrix within the matrix, that is, game or dream world being played by a character from another dream world above it, and 2. The regular game pods, which, bearing a resemblance with grotesque and misshapen compacted female bodies, only have activity, that is, what we would call their life or animation, when a human is plugged in to feed them as a power supply. The latter analogy will become important to understand the reasons for the clear cult mentality that aims at continuing the game or dream world, or fantasy iterations by any means, as we are providing fuel to the game pod, so to speak, using the existence analogy. This cult we find in our reality is sort of like the society of sensation found in the also 1999 computer RPG classic game named Planescape Torment. If you're not familiar with it, browse it as there is a whole wiki explaining its intricacies. Interestingly, the initial premise of Planescape Torment is the story of a character with amnesia, called the Nameless One, that resurrects in the same exact body every time he dies, but that's just a side note for now. In that game, the Sensates, which are the members of the Society of Sensation, believe that the multiverse, that is the whole set of different planes of existence, can only be known through the experience of the senses. Therefore, they collect sensations and experiences through items named sensory stones that they have to be filled previously by recording the sensations experienced by someone else 
to provide them with a catalogue of different sensations. They are depicted basically as sensation addicts. The game pods of existence and the sensory stones of Planescape Torment both reveal something important about our existence here. That is that we are experiencing, but not necessarily living. And as we further our submersion into further imaginary concepts that aim at maintaining animated and the whole idea of solid and concrete self, let's say, the more we become addicted to being a character, not the player powering it. However, it is the first item on the list, that is, the matrix within the matrix, the game or dream world being played by a character from another dream world above it, that is the most intriguing and deserving of even further introspection. So in the Matrix movie, uh, I'm now talking about the first one alone, not the sequels, we see Neo being found by Morpheus, because he searched himself using his skills. When he meets Morpheus, we have the famous blue pill or red pill scene, in which Neo is offered the choice to either go deeper, taking a leap of faith, or turn back and continue on as if nothing ever happened. Now let us imagine, for the sake of argument, that every time the apocalypse is being experienced, there is a Morpheus of sorts, coming to us with more or less the same choice. This is a metaphor. I say more or less because what would be at stake in this imaginary hypothesis would be far more than to the I or ego um, than otherwise. So imagine that there is an event that is bound to happen, something terrible for self-preservation, and that is potentially extremely fearful. So let's imagine then that Morpheus offers the choice. The red pill, the red pill leads to the unknown ending, as Morpheus can explain nothing before you choose, while the blue pill leads to entering a freshly made new matrix starting completely anew. If we were to take the blue pill, wouldn't we be entering a reality inside a reality, while the other one skipped the ending for us? And where would the red pill, that is, taking a step into the unknown, lead us? A recurring theme, uh, theme dug up from the science dogma uh, to the New Age spirituality as well, when defining creation or the universe, is that of a primordial spiral, inside which higher or lower worlds are supposed to exist. Moreover, that spiral is still expanding, that is, it's still creating new worlds, or so it's presented. Now, what I'm considering is, if that seemingly endless fractal spiral is perpetuated by our own uh, blue pill choices. By we avoiding somehow witnessing the ending of a story that the cults of shadow in power have been trying so hard to have us avoid by distraction or through believing it will be something else they offer us as an alternative? In this imaginary hypothesis, I am sharing with you uh, what would it be if the apocalypse's ending, which is the ending of the ending of this story of reality we have been living on, was a quit screen, let's say, the equivalent to credits rolling for the end of the movie so that we could wake up in the metaphorical cinema and go back home to truth? It would mean taking the red pill in the Morpheus analogy, but that is the unknown. We complain about this reality at whatever level we experience it, but are we really, collectively I mean, willing to let go of it? Religious terms for liberation go from awakening to enlightenment to salvation, for example. All of them imply, when we really reflect on them, a rescue from darkness, from a place where we think we sense light, but that it is actually dark, like a dark room where we are sleeping. So in that sense, awakening would be to wake up from that sleep, and enlightenment would be to switch on the light so that the room where we sleep isn't dark anymore, and salvation would be an actual rescue, to release us from the dark room and bring us back to our true sta state. Intriguing. What I can say is that these revelations are on full throttle, and they, that is the cult of shadows, the society of sensation, the game addicts, they don't seem to mind. Perhaps they are counting on our egotistic weakness. Like I stated in the system's recruitment contemplation, and I assume that 
and, and they assume that we will not choose the red pill into the unknown. Note that I do not really think that such would be unknown, but if we are amnesiac, then we wouldn't remember. So maybe if all this rambling of mine has any sense to it, it, it really is time to remember as much as we can beforehand. Almost every single would-be advisor or mentor on the internet and the immediate reality around us is telling us in one way or another to seek truth. Okay. Yet only the truthful among them will honestly, authentically and repeatedly suggest you to recall it within. Because if the world is a distraction fanfare, an amusement park, how can you wade through it and expect to find anything? It is they who are the addicts to the senses. It is they who belong to the metaphorical society of sensation presented in plain, Planescape Torment or the game addicts in existence, even those who fought for so-called realism. They are that we don't have to be, or at least we should not be, because that is not the holiness of what we are, that's for sure. They don't care that we fight them with the weapons and tools they themselves gave us like the amphibian bone and teeth pistol in existence. That is how they expect to convert us. They want us to hate them like the Emperor Palpatine, because hatred builds a psychological pressure that needs release and would make us more prone to taking the imaginary blue pill mentioned before and helping them create a new reality altogether for new sensations. That is really all they care about, survival to experience sensation. Because by now, that is most probably all they have left for them. Like in existence, they need us to feed their game pots. Like in the Matrix, they need us to feed their machines. Like in the society of sensation of Planescape Torment, they need us to fill the sensory stones for them. Oh, and of course, they have already reserved all the credits with the game master or the movie director, so that they get to be in the most comfortable roles. They just need you and me to fill in what's left. So if we are to fight them, let us not use the weapons they gave us, but instead the weapon we all have, rich or poor, cultured or illiterate, strong or weak. Our inner, silent truth. You see, the beauty of that is that it doesn't matter what they gave you to believe, whether from a book or from TV or from peer pressure, because you will always be able to find your inner truth, whatever you are, wherever you are. Only you have your own key. Don't give it away. The biggest victory we can have over them is actually not to become one of them. They will try to do that, funneling our attention away from the stillness within that speaks no words, and yet knows. We have paid for the ticket to this reality movie with our blood, our sweat and our tears. It is perhaps best to watch the ending in silence? If we can do that, is that perhaps all it takes to wake up in truth? <laughs>